Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a diagonal pleated ice dye. You want to start by centering your shirt using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. And what I'm doing right now is I'm using a washable marker to mark out the center points. And then I'm going to take one sleeve, tuck it inside the other sleeve. I'm going to line up the seams in the underarm and along the shoulder. And then I'm going to find my marks that I made and give it a little pinch and a shake. Then I smooth out one of the sides and then I fold the other side on top of it. And what that is doing is it's laying the front side of the shirt and the back side of the shirt next to each other and that creates symmetry. I should also mention, it's a lot easier to do this when the shirt is turned inside out. I did not turn this shirt inside out. The seams are not in the way of each other when it's inside out. So um, note to self, next time turn the shirt inside out. Now that you have your shirt centered and it's all smoothed out, it's time to decide where you want the center of your pattern to be. Keeping in mind, nothing looks good when it's sitting right on top of the belly button. So as a rule of thumb, I like to come down about an inch or two from the underarm. And using my yardstick, I'm going to create a nice straight edge. And I'm just gonna fold the shirt from the bottom up to the top. Now, using a washable marker and the yardstick, I'm going to mark out the pattern. And for this particular shirt, I want it to have a diamond shape. So I'm going from the collar towards the underarm. If I went from the center of the shirt over the shoulder, it would create an X type pattern. And now I'm making my lines about every four inches apart. This is not a necessary step, but it helps me when I'm doing my pleating, making those lines nice and straight. So I tried to start by pleating right at the edge like I normally do, and it just wasn't matching up. The one side was shorter than the other in the pleats. So I decided that if I started in the center of the shirt, I could get better symmetry. So you just wanna pleat along all of these lines, making those lines as straight as possible. And for this project, I'm securing it with nylon string. I think it's beading string and I got it off of Amazon and there is a link for it down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check that out. And the string comes in a whole bunch of colors. There is no rhyme or reason as to why I'm using this string versus kite string versus rubber bands. I just grabbed it up and started using it. I'm using a Gildan heavy cotton shirt and it's four layers thick so it can be a little bit difficult to pleat but just keep working at it and I'd say these pleats are probably about a half inch tall. That's the one good thing about ice dyeing, it's very forgiving. There are other projects like the Wigwag for instance, those pleats need to be tiny like a fourth of an inch, half of an inch but for ice dyes Sometimes the taller the pleat, the better, because it just makes a really beautiful pattern. Continue to secure your project as you go with whatever you're using. If all you have is rubber bands, that will work just fine for this type of a project. What I want you to focus on is my pleating and how I'm really focusing on keeping those lines straight. I'm not so much worried about what the rest of the shirt is doing. I just want those lines to be straight because that's what's going to create the nice symmetry in the diamond pattern.
So now we're getting into the thicker part of the shirt. We have the collar up here and that material is ribbed and it's stiffer. So it's not necessarily the easiest thing to pleat. So as you'll notice, I put my finger up underneath and sort of help that pleat along. That works out really well for me. So try that and see if it helps you. While we have a minute here while you watch me pleat this up, I want to say a few things. First off, thank you so much for watching. And then I want to remind you guys, or if you're new to the channel, that all of my social media links are listed down below in the description box. I would love to see what you're creating. I have a Facebook group and it's called Tie Dye Belladonna Dyes. So just put in a request and I will accept it and you can join the group. Share your projects. There are many uh, people in the group already that are sharing and they would love to see what you're making. Uh, we love to look at tie-dye and you never know, something that you post in there might inspire me to create a tutorial about it because you guys inspire me too. And then please subscribe to the channel and leave a thumbs up and then also click the bell and set it to all. But the thing with setting it to all is you have to go into your settings on your phone or iPad and go into the YouTube part and allow for notifications. And that way you never miss a video that I put up. So that would be really helpful. And again, I appreciate you guys for watching and supporting the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. So thank you. So now that you have it all tied up, and if you're using string, work your way back to where you started from. And as you're doing this, pick up any like loose tails that might be poking out, and then just secure it with a simple double knot. We made it through that tying. So now it's time for the fun part and the best part. We get to add the dye. And this shirt's going to be Christmas themed. So when I add my dye to this particular pattern, I like to make the very center of it a, a small amount of dye because I want that center to have like a glowing center that then just bursts out into the other colors. And then for the other colors, I pretty much make them about the same size. Some of you may be new to watching me add dye in a bottle, so I'll briefly explain it. What's inside these bottles is one fourth cup of soda ash and two teaspoons of dye. And I do have a tutorial on how to make it and that is in the playlist tie dye tools. And you could just spoon dye on with the spoon like the good old fashioned way if you'd like. I plan on making a mass production of these same shirts. So it's just a lot quicker and more efficient with the dye to do it this way. And this is Nugget Ice from my Frigidaire Ice Machine and I am not affiliated with them at all, but it is Christmas time is coming so you can tell your husbands and wives this is what you want for Christmas. And I do have a link for it down below in the description box which makes it super duper easy to find. Now you just wanna cover it and batch it for 48 hours after the ice melts. It's been 48 hours since the ice has melted and what the heck is going on with the back of this shirt? 
I usually never flip my shirts and add dye to the back, so I don't know why I would have started this time, but we can talk about that. So you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers, and then gradually increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. And then from here, I take it to the washing machine and I use Synthropol and a hot water cycle. And then I do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft to bring softness back into the fabric. Then I throw it in the dryer and we'll come back and see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our diagonal pleated ice dye after it's been washed and dried. And I love this shirt. And I dislike this shirt all at the same time. I love the front of the shirt. I think it looks perfect. The back of the shirt, well, it has some saturation issues, obviously, but that's okay because it's tie dye. So we're here to learn, right? What I should have done after the first layer of ice melted, I should have flipped it over and added dye to the backside in the same dye pattern. But I rarely ever do that. So, you know, why would I start now? And then take note of the center of the shirt. Remember how I said just adding a little bit of dye at the very beginning creates just sort of a glowing center that bursts out into the rest of the colors? And I do think that I achieved that here. So I learn a lot with every project that I make. So next time, I'll make this better. And when you make yours, flip it over and add dye to the back side. So what do you guys think of this shirt and the color combination? please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.